afternoon, everyone, and thank you for your patience. This is actually our December 2021 Power Lunch series presentation, but because of illness, we put it off until January. We're so glad that you joined us. You will be glad that you joined us. Jill Boyd is our presenter today. Jill spent 20 years in the, as a geriatric social worker. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. And um, <clears throat> she and her husband, David, in their 40s were called to ministry. And so Gothenburg actually happened to be their first location in ministry. Jill uh, preaches in the Presbyterian Church in Cozad and her husband in the Presbyterian Church here. And we're very excited to have her here today for the Puzzles of Life. We're grateful to the leader for um, sponsoring our program and to these floral for sponsoring your lunch today served by Hogs Brew. Now keep watching for 2022 information. We're going quarterly in 22. We have four outstanding programs planned for you and we're very excited to um, present those again this year. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Jill. Thank you for having me. Give Jill a round of applause for me. Thank you, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here, and I appreciate your patience in waiting until I got better so that we could reschedule this. Um, as Deb said, um, I am a pastor in COZAD. My husband, David, is a pastor here. We're second career pastors, and that's just a few little things about me. So I'm going to share some more about me as we go through looking at some of the puzzles that I assembled. Um, I was invited to participate in this program back in 2020 when Roxanne was seeing all of the puzzles I was doing while, I was, while we were shut down due to the virus. And I was posting them on Facebook and she invited me to um, be considered doing this. So one of the most important things, at least for, those, for our purposes for today, Roxanne, it's not forwarding. It's a puzzle. She'll figure it out. Okay. I like to do puzzles. I like to do puzzles of all kinds. I like jigsaw puzzles. I like Sudoku's. I like trivia contests. And I like visual puns like the one that's in the low, um, what would be on your low left corner. Just can anyone tell me what that is? Okay. So periodic element, the periodic table, and you've got three of them. What do they say? He, he, he. That's laughing gas. Okay. So I like puzzles that make you think in that way as well. You know what? I think it's not turned on. So can I? I didn't. I'm going to try it again. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So. <laughs> you may just have to stay there. That's okay. 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 So this is a, a slide that shows you other kinds of word puzzles, like the one um, somewhere over the rainbow, um, the third one on the on the top, um, green eggs over ham. You know, again, those kind of word puzzles that just make you think. And I am a maven for doing things with letters of the alphabet. So that bobble one there where you try to make as many words out of, puzzle, out of the letters as you can. I have been known to take and write the alphabet down one side of the page and say, David, tell me the title of the book you're reading right now. Um, and I will write those letters down. And I try to think of famous people with those, um, those initials. Just things like that. I'm always intrigued by puzzles of any kind. Yep. To what? Take the flowers down. Sure. Better? Uh, and then there was right. Is that better? Welcome. Okay. But most of all, I love to do jigsaw puzzles. And during the pandemic, they were one of my saving grace. I, think I did them. Mic isn't working. We lost your mic. We're having. <laughs> Hello, I did. It's 
It's on. Okay, better? Okay. So jigsaw puzzles got, I'm gonna, that sounds loud. Is that too loud for you all? Okay. So jigsaw puzzles got me through the pandemic. Um, when we were shut down, I did them all the time. Estim I estimate that I did between 30 to 35 of them in 2020. And every puzzle, because I'm a pastor, I like to have meaning made out of them. And so this one just shows, I like puzzles that I can reminisce. I love living in this country. I love the freedom that I'm allowed as a woman to be a pastor and some of the things that living in a democracy allow to have happen. Um, I, so around the 4th of July, I usually do that puzzle right there, which shows, you know, apple pie and hot dogs and the American flag and different things about the country. Um, I also, whoops, uh, we need to back up one. Okay, go ahead, Roxanne. Okay, um, around Christmas time, I like to do Christmas puzzles. And this is one that shows different storybooks that are popular at Christmas time. Um, I like puzzles like what you're seeing there and in the one before, and you'll see in the, that follow, they have lots of different components to them. So somebody said, it looks like you like to do complicated hard puzzles. And I, and I don't think they are. They're usually a thousand piece, but I like. And there's lots of different elements to them. So I can literally just focus on one element at a time. So this is a puzzle that I like to do around Christmas. I have several Christmas ones. Um, David and I love to travel. And so it's always fun to do puzzles that allow me to remember trips we've taken. Uh, we have been to Paris. We um, saw the Eiffel Tower. We didn't go up in it. But doing puzzles like this allow me to be able to reminisce and remember fun trips that we've taken. Go ahead. Um, puzzles like this, this is various islands. I'm one of these people who water is her element. So I'm happiest when I'm by water. Doesn't matter if it's a stream, a river, a lake, the ocean. And so when I do a puzzle like this, I can reminisce about places I've been like Maui, like Sanibel Island. And I can also daydream about places I'd like to go. This is just another one. This one was loaned to me. During the pandemic, I was dubbed um, um, a dealer because I had a lot of people who wanted to borrow puzzles from me. And I was supplying puzzles to people, probably seven or eight different people over a course of about six months. And I'd leave new ones on my porch and they'd pick them up and they'd drop off their other ones. And so I became a puzzle dealer and they would loan me their puzzles as well. And this was one that was loaned to me and was a lot of fun to do because of my love for travel. I am originally born and raised in Michigan. That's where I met my husband, David. Um, both of our moms live there and some of our family. And so during 2020, when Michigan was hit so hard with the pandemic, we were, of course, very concerned about our friends and family who live there. So I actually have two Michigan puzzles, and I made it my point over a, a, a week or so to do both of those Michigan puzzles. And that allowed me to remember places that I had been, um, places where my family lived, um, memories of, of various things that we did when I was growing up, and to intentionally pray and remember the people in Michigan during the pandemic. I got this puzzle when we moved to rural Nebraska. I didn't look, know about barn quilts until a, a number of years, about nine, five, six years ago when we got here. And I got that one. And it's one of my favorite ones. I've gotten rid of a number of my puzzles, but um, that's one I keep and do periodically because it, it'll go with me whenever we leave this community. Um, I like mysteries. And there is a, a, a collection of puzzles that are mystery puzzles that you have a picture on the cover and then you have the, a thousand piece puzzle to assemble. And then there's a story that you read. And the picture that you assemble with the pieces is different than what's on the the cover. There are similarities, but there are differences. The idea is you look at the, the cover, you read the story, you assemble the puzzle, and there are clues in the puzzle to help you solve the mystery. So it's kind of a puzzle in a puzzle. And we have several of those, and I enjoy those. And, and here's the other one. So those are both just pictures of some of those mystery puzzles. Go ahead. David and I love to go to movies. We love to watch movies. Uh, one of the There we go. 
Um, one, when we lived in St. Louis, one of the places we lived was a mile from a movie theater. And so that was when we were working in positions that didn't involve weekend work. And so every Sunday, at, we would go in the afternoon and we would walk to the theater, which was a mile away, watch a movie, have popcorn for our lunch, and then walk back home. And that was our afternoon and our way of doing things. So when I put puzzles like this together, I get to remember movies, movies that I've seen with friends, movies that came out when I was growing up. And again, it generates a lot of memories and a lot of um, uh, thoughts about good times. That's another one, a different brand of puzzles, again, with lots of different movies, same kind of thing. Yes, I have been known to enjoy a glass or two of wine. Um, I'm a Chardonnay girl. I will drink red wine. I will drink other things. I'm, I don't drink liquor. Um, margaritas are the only exception there. I'm not a beer drinker, but I do like wine. And most people who know me, everyone who knows me well knows that I like a nice Chardonnay. So I've got several, that's a future you, fine, Roxanne. That's um, the previous one was pictures of bottles of wine. This is a picture of what reminds us of a winery. And my sister and I used to go to wineries when she would come and visit St. Louis and David and I would take her and we'd go wine tasting. So she gave me that puzzle. And then this one is just glasses of different kinds of wine. And um, I'm not sure if Jan Gill loaned that one to me or I loaned that one to her, but, um, Okay, that's the Civil War one. My husband is, was a history major and undergraduate. Um, we are both lifelong learners. Um, I love to learn. I actually bought him that puzzle for Christmas. <laughs> I'm the one who did it. Um, but it was fun to, for me to remember things that I had been taught, like probably when I was in junior high and I didn't remember. Um, and just sort of go over that and it was made for some interesting conversation with David about the Civil War and he's just got all of this knowledge in his head and I'm just like, how do you know all that? It's like, well, I, I read it and I'm like, well, there's lots of things I read once, but I don't remember them. Um, but um, so things like this help me with history, gives us things to talk about um, and are just fun to assemble. This next one is also historical. This was a 500 piece round puzzle about women who were involved in helping women to get the vote in this country. Um, I had heard of maybe eight or 10 of them. So it was a huge learning process for me. And with it came a big handout of, with histories about the women. So that gave me a lot of, of information. That was really fun. Usually I, I will put puzzles together by putting the frame together first and then filling in different sections. This one I actually had to start in the middle and put that together and then sort of work out different work differently by colors according to the color of, of um, different things. So it was an interesting 500 piece round puzzle that I learned a lot from. Go ahead, Roxanne. This is just pretty. Sometimes I just like to um, you know, do things that give me peace and that are pretty and easy. And this was one of those. Um, again, art. David and I, when we lived in St. Louis, we used to go to the art museum and go to special exhibits. They did some really wonderful ones. And so um, puzzles like this remind me of those kinds of things. And um, again, they're pretty and diverse. This reminds me of comfort food and grandma's kitchen and her lemon meringue pie. Um, so there are, uh, is a group of puzzles that allow you to um, go back in time. And this is one of them in that series. And then there's uh, this one and the next one are stemmed back in the 1950s. And um, there's the diner and the other one was I think the drive-in. And I was born in 59. So I wasn't the era of cool skirts and all of that. But in the 60s and early 70s, Happy Days was a, a popular show with saddle shoes and things were still still on the fringes. And so I watched a lot of shows and I, I knew people who, and my mom wore poodle skirt and things. So um, those are fun to do for reasons like that. What else do we have? Old lunch boxes. Do any of you see any lunch boxes that you used to carry to school? There's cereal boxes. One of the things when I was growing up, I, I have a brother who's 10 and a half months younger than me. And my mom would get those, those containers of there were different kinds of cereal in the package. And so we would be so deliberate about, oh, what pack? Oh, I'm gonna take this kind today. Oh, well, I'll have that one tomorrow, you know? And so this kind of puzzle helps me remember those kinds of things. 
um, fads, fads of the 1980s. How many of you remember um, Pet Rocks or the Magic 8 Ball or things like that? So I, this is one of my favorites. I've probably done this a half a dozen times and every time it gives me just as much joy as it ever did. Um, more games. Um, I love games. We have friends who, um, um, Steve says their daughter-in-law, her love languages games. She loves to play games. Um, so if you ever want someone to play games with, I'm your person. Uh, again, more games. Um, some that I played as kids. Some There's one of the older games. Um, and games are kind of their own puzzle because you want to play it. You've got to figure out what you're doing. I think the battery's going is what I think it is. I think the battery's going. Do you have a battery? Yeah. So those are some of the puzzles that I've done in the last in the last year and a half. Um, and all of those I assemble um, and they share a little bit about who I am. So now I have a puzzle for you. Can anyone tell me who this is? David, you can't answer. Forrest Gump, that's right. And one of the most beloved and well Most, one of the most beloved and well-known quotes from that movie is life is like a box of chocolates. And Forrest, as he's, sitting, as he's sitting on a bench waiting for a bus, passes on the lessons that he learned from his mama, that in life, just like a box of chocolates, we never know what we're going to get until we encounter it. And it's true. We don't know what's going to happen when we leave the theater today. Okay, let's try this with some new batteries. So it, it is true that we don't know what's going to happen when we leave the theater today. We don't know what's going to happen, uh, what challenges we're gonna be faced with tomorrow. And we don't certainly know what kind of obstacles or blessings await us in the coming, in this brand new year of 2022. But just because we can't know what's coming doesn't necessarily mean that we can't know who we are. And we, all of us together, make up this community. Each one of us has a role, and it's a role that no one else can fill. None of us is complete in and of ourselves. We all have something to contribute. And what it is that we contribute is a combination of all of those things that make us the individual that we are. And, and what we contribute is absolutely essential. So with all due respect and apologies to Forrest Gump's mama, I think life is like a lot like a jigsaw puzzle. Did we miss one? No, okay. Parts of the different parts of the body all work together to become one um, when it's a healthy body, okay. Uh, different individual strands woven together make a beautiful tapestry, just like individual tiles when put together make a beautiful mosaic. A lot of different ingredients can be put together to create delicious casseroles or beautiful desserts or wonderful salads. And lots of different notes and symbols can be put together in certain ways to make beautiful sonatas and symphonies. So in the very same way, Jigsaw puzzles are like that in that individual pieces come together to make a unified whole. That's where I should have said. So with all due respect and my apologies to Mrs. Gump, life is like a jigsaw puzzle. So now I want you to take the piece of puzzle that I gave, that I, I asked to have you given when you came in. And I want you to take a look at it. 
How many pieces do you have? How many pieces does your neighbor have? How many pieces do I have? Right. We all have one piece, not more than that, not less than that. We all have one equal part. Each one is different and each one has something to offer. We are all part of a larger whole. So without our individual piece being put into the whole, we are incomplete. We are incomplete. We are not fully, we, we are not all that we can be. So think about Gothenburg. If there's a piece missing of those of us in this community, we can't be who we, who we are. Can you imagine a Gothenburg without farmers or doctors or theater volunteers or postal workers? We wouldn't be the same community, would we? We all have a part. And without that part, we aren't everything that we could be. Have you ever put together a puzzle that you completed and then you find that it has a missing piece? I have. It's very, very frustrating and it's very disappointing. You can tell from the whole what the picture is supposed to be. And you had fun putting it together and you know you rose to the challenge to, to get all those pieces together, but it's still not complete. It hasn't lived up to its full design because there's that piece missing. And take it from a pro, when there's one piece missing, it's not the same and it's real frustrating. And everyone who does jigsaw puzzles knows that. And marketers know that too. Because a number of years ago, a puzzle was, was marketed that was intentionally designed to have missing pieces. And it was marketed to be for people you don't like. Yeah, yeah. you laugh, I think it's mean. <laughs> Fortunately, nobody gave me that puzzle. But my point here is everyone has a piece. And, and when there's one missing piece, it, it totally changes the flavor of everything that we can be. Now, another thing that we can learn from our puzzle piece is that no two are identical. If you looked at your piece and compared it to the person sitting next to you, you would see that there might be similarities, but there are different colors, there are different shapes, and they're, they're not going to fit together. Each one is unique in and of itself. You could try to push them together and make them go together if you really, really wanted to, but they wouldn't be a true fit. So just like those different jigsaw puzzles, the same is true of all of us. We all have a part, but our part is unique and we can't force ourselves to go into an area that it, it isn't the right fit for us. So the task then becomes finding the best fit for us and filling that niche in the best way we can and have it be a true fit. Go ahead. Okay. Puzzles by nature are challenging. They're puzzles. They're puzzling. They're supposed to give us, um, give us something to not struggle with, but have to master in some way. Um, they take time. They take commitment. They take focus patience, perseverance. Well, doesn't life take all of those things as well? So if you'll forgive me for just a moment, I'm gonna sound like a preacher just for a minute. As you know, the title of my presentation is Puzzles of Life. The pieces will all make sense eventually. Well, when Roxanne and I started talking about this, present, this presentation too many Christmas, year and a half ago, easily, maybe more. Um, but originally the title that got thrown out was um, the puzzles will all fit together or that something along that line. And we settled on this one, that the pieces will all make sense eventually. Um, this is something that I believe is true, but this is also something that I wrestle with a lot because I think the pieces will all make sense eventually, just maybe not necessarily right now and maybe not in this life. Um, I perhaps in time with life experience, with more wisdom, um, just with the passage of time, people things will make more sense than they do now and fit together in ways that we can't make them right now. But it may even be that we'll get those answers 
when we leave this world. David has a saying that when we get to heaven, we're all going to have flat foreheads because when we get there, we're going to go, now I get it. Um, you know, so I don't think we're always going to get answers, um, but we're going to try to make sense of them as much as we possibly can. So if any of you were hoping that I was going to come with some sage advice or some concrete answers, um, I'm sorry to disappoint you because I don't have them. I wish I did. But I do believe in time that everything will fit together, that we can't make fit right now, and that they will eventually make sense. So what I think our task in life is, is to try to understand how we are shaped and how we belong in the here and now, in this community, in the world, in our families, in our workplaces, in all those different parts of our lives that we participate. And I think our goal is, is to be open to how important our individual piece really is in the larger picture, not just for us, but in the larger picture of all that we can be. And I think our task is to embrace the mystery and trust that if we are willing, if we persevere, if we're patient, and if we stay focused, the pieces will eventually fit together and make sense to us. So I would ask you to take a look one more time at your particular puzzle piece. And notice that it's not very big in and of itself. It really can't do very much by itself. But combining it with all of the other pieces, using its unique shape, its unique color, it's finding its proper place and then fitting it into that place, then it becomes part of a greater whole. So that's what I think our task is and what we can learn from a single piece of puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle piece. I think we can learn those things about ourselves, about our place in our community, about our place in the world, about our place in all of those systems in which we find ourselves. My hope for all of us is that we will find our particular piece and that we'll find how it fits in and that we will all together make 2022 a really terrific year. And to give that goal and hope and my prayer legs, when you leave the theater, there is a puzzle sitting out on a table in the lobby. You all have a piece of the puzzle that goes into that puzzle. So when you leave, I wanna say the sanctuary because that's my language. When you leave this theater, uh, put your piece in the puzzle as you go. That will be just be a tactile and concrete way of reminding you that your piece matters and that your piece is integral to who this community is and to ultimately how this community is a part integral part of the state of Nebraska and how this state is an integral part of this country and how our country is an integral part of the world. We are all truly connected in ways we don't even realize. Thank you very much for your time. Well, I always get the best part of um, this job to come up and have conversation and ask questions. And um, you talked about persevering with puzzles. And even in your presentation today, you've had to persevere uh, through batteries and through clickers not working. And um, I want to know, have you ever had a puzzle that you couldn't complete? I'm not talking about the missing piece that wouldn't, you know, wasn't there, but like any that you couldn't actually get done. No, and, and part of that is because I will rise to the challenge. I will, I will not let a silly puzzle overcome me. Um, and so um, I will complete them. Now you can ask David, I will complain and I will whine and I say, I don't like it and I don't wanna do this and this isn't fun and this wasn't what it's supposed to be, but I will complete it. Um, I actually, if, well, since you're doing what, well, maybe this will work. Oh, okay, do you want me to go back? No, I was going to ask you to, ask, to move forward one. Mm -hmm. I received a puzzle for Christmas this year, and it's the one of the, the rabbit outline on a pale green background. And I don't know if you can tell what that is, but the pale green is words, and they're words from the book um, Alice in Wonderland, and that's the rabbit. This is a diabolical puzzle in my mind, and I am not looking forward to doing it. But my brother-in-law and sister-in-law got it for me, and I will do it. 
Um, and it's going to be a challenge and I will do it one time and then I will pass it on either I'll donate it or I will share it with my brother in law, but I, I will do it. Um, so once I'm committed I'm in. Yeah. I love that and I love the, the idea too that when we persevere, um, it doesn't necessarily mean we can't be frustrated or, oh. or struggled in the middle. And even as we've gone through all the things that we've gone through in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. um, we might feel those moments of frustration, but we can keep going. Right. The other thing I um, noticed was that, that you and I had to work together here mm -hmm. because, um, you know, things weren't going the way we thought and had practice. So um, how have you incorporated working together? I noticed you said sharing puzzles, right? Mm -hmm. But um, how have you worked together with people to be able to complete them and to get that final, you know, um, picture? So most of the time when I'm doing puzzles, I'm doing them at home, like uh, while David's wa while we watch a football game or something like that. So sometimes he'll come and do a piece. Um, so I'm not doing puzzles a lot with other people at the same time, but what I have done is like the the uh, what the puzzle I showed you with all the wine bottles and all the wine glasses. There are tips for how to do this puzzle, and so I have been known to put post-it notes on, but like things like saying, um, notice how the different bottles are different. Or they're the grapes around the different bottles have different textures. Um, little clues like that, or with this puzzle, I found it. Um, I found the best way to approach it was starting in the middle and doing it this way and then working it out. So I'll give tips for other people so that they can find it enjoyable. Um, so I've done that kind of thing. If I'm working with other people, I always start with the frame. I like things orderly and organized and I like it all framed out and then I'll start it from there. So if somebody wants to start in a different way, um, I'll have a problem with that. <laughs> um, I like to have the frame. So I always start with that. Um, I also bag my frames up. I, I, once I do a, a puzzle, I bag all of the pieces into a large Ziploc baggie, but I put the frame pieces in a small one. I do that, I always mix them together because I wanna do the whole puzzle. But some people find it easier to have those pieces out. So that's something else I do if I'm gonna share my puzzles. So that's a way that I kind of work together in terms of my puzzle making with others. That's wonderful. So now uh, from the audience, do you have any questions that you'd like to ask Jill? Yes. So you talked about how sometimes you appreciate puzzles that they bring back memories and they make you feel calm. Uh, do you do any other thinking while you're doing your puzzles? Do you come up with like certain ideas or anything else? Or do you just focus on the puzzle? So I'm going to repeat that question for those with uh, uh, joining us by Zoom. She said, um, <clears throat> you like to look at the puzzles, they bring back memories and give you things to think about, but do you think about other things? During that time, do you come up with sermon topics or other ideas? So Caroline, the short answer is yes. Everything has potential to be a sermon idea. Um, in my household and with our friends, Kim and Steve, we frequently are known to say, that'll preach, that'll preach. Um, if things get triggered, I'll make a note of it because you never know. So yeah, some, and to be honest with you, I did um, a sermon three years ago, maybe with a puzzle theme for stewardship um, about how the gifts that people give um, during stewardship in the congregation, they all matter. It doesn't, you know, it, it isn't about whether you can give $5 a month or $500 a month. Every gift makes a difference. And the whole is, is, you know, the whole is greater than the sum of the parts. So just even puzzles itself has reached in my congregation. So yeah, I come up with ideas and, and things all the time. And any other questions from our audience? Jill, can you talk about Michael's puzzles? Yes, thank you. Uh, my brother-in-law, Michael, is a photographer and he's also a world traveler. And he has given me some of the most special gifts of puzzles that I've ever received. Um, I'm not saying necessarily that they're the easiest puzzles, but when he travels, he will take photographs. And he and his wife then each year go through the photographs and decide which one they want to have made into a puzzle for me. And so those puzzles are always one of a kind. They're beautiful. They're sometimes a challenge, um, but they're special because of the thought and the love that went into them. So I'm glad you reminded me of that, David. Thank you. No. No. Okay, any other audience questions? 
I have one last question I'd like to do, and that is, um, you know, the topic is on the surface puzzles and puzzle pieces, but I love the deeper context of how important each of us are to the bigger picture, to our communities, to our uh, families, occupations. Um, but one of the things I found through this pandemic is how uh, sometimes we feel alone and also how sometimes we feel like what we do or who we are isn't important or doesn't matter um, and maybe isn't essential. That word has become so popular. Um, and I just wonder if you could speak to that for a moment again about um, how you feel like you would encourage someone who might be feeling a little low, feeling like they don't really fit in this uh, certain community or a sector, you know, what encouragement would you offer for them? That's a good question. Um, and it's something I think all of us have wrestled with for two years now, at least. We've had to think, we've had to reassess and figure out how our particular piece fits in a new way. And um, in some ways, recreate what we're doing or how we're doing, not necessarily recreating us, because I'm still me. But I had to learn how to do the pieces of ministry very different. I had to learn how to provide pastoral care in a very different way. Um, you know, make signs and go and stand outside windows at nursing homes and wave to my folks, um, you know, things like that. Um, and I think, you know, our, our, our challenge for all of us is to help everyone realize that they have a valuable part and they have a piece and encourage people who don't necessarily feel that or believe that to reach out to someone, whether it's their pastor, whether they're a friend. If we know someone who's isolated, we reach out to them um, because ultimately we are all connected. And um, we may think, oh, what happens to that person over on the other side of town doesn't affect me. It does. We may not see it, but it's that ripple effect. Um, and so I wish I had you know, wonderful answers, um, but I just think being aware, reaching out, being creative, um, finding other ways to do the, you know, re writing notes, sending funny things, sending funny messages, anything to help people know that they are, they, they have a part. Um, I, I'll be honest, I, um, uh, when I started coming to these back in July, I knew I was going to be doing a presentation and I started feeling really insecure about myself because I'm like, these presentations are really good. How can talking about jigsaw puzzles be of value to anyone? I don't have anything people are going to want to say. And then I started thinking about what I was saying. It's like, well, that applies to me too. There is this piece here. Um, you know, it's different from everybody else, but it's my unique piece. And helping people somehow find a way to begin to hold on to that belief that there really is something that everyone has to offer. I love that. And thank you so much for your time and your courage to come and share a message uh, with us today. I appreciate that and the beautiful pictures of puzzles. Um, I'm so excited to have a second year of Power Lunch. It's a little different. It's not every month. So we hope that you will join us for the first quarter presentation. It'll be in February. And um, Flatwater Bank is um, going to be sponsoring, but also having presenters here. Um, it's going to be about leadership and, and our identities and our personalities and how to team build. It'll be a very uh, great uh, presentation, and I hope that you will not only plan to attend, but also invite friends and part of your team to come back um, and join us in February. So with that, would you please help me in appreciating Jill again today? Thank you so Thank much you. for coming and don't forget to put your puzzle um, piece in the puzzle out there because we don't want to leave any missing spots. So make sure you put I'll your have a puzzle with a missing piece if you don't do it. Come on, folks, don't do that to me. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming.